What is up YouTube? Today we are working on the back of the house. This is gonna be Katie and I's bedroom. I kind of explained it all in the last video, so check it out. I already grouted the floor, it's all done. Got some stuff up in the closet, but haven't finished it yet. Right now what we're working on is getting these doors installed for the closet and the bathroom. And I just wanna show you a little trick, especially if you're working in an older house like this one, built in 1956. The subfloor is not gonna be level. So you really want a level floor to install a door correctly, but you can do it without. So I'm gonna show you that in this video. Can you say hi to everyone on YouTube? The first thing that you need to do is to find out if your floor is level. And I've got this long level and I can automatically tell that this floor is not, but you can see this gap under the level, which means that there's a dip right there between the two ends of the level. This is a six foot level. Ideally, you would want a level about the same length as this opening, I just don't have one. Either way, it is not level. You can see that it's not even close to level. And so one way to do it is to put the end of your ruler or the end of your level at the corner of the door and then raise it until it's level and measure the height difference. You want to know that measurement, this distance right here. I have this rotary laser level and you can see this line is pretty consistent in person. It just kind of looks splotchy like this on camera. And so what I can do is I can take a tape measure and measure from the bottom to that line on both sides and then subtract the difference and I have an exact measurement. This works pretty good, but this is better. All right, so we're gonna take our construction calculator and we're gonna do what we saw was six and three quarter inch minus six and five sixteenths inch. So we're seven sixteenths inch difference from the left side to the right side. So that means that right side is seven sixteenths of an inch higher than the left side. So what we're gonna wanna do is cut seven sixteenths of an inch off of that side of the door jamb. And that will allow, when both are sitting flush on the ground, the top of it to be level. If you don't do that, the gap up here is going to be different from side to side by 7 16 of an inch. We're talking almost a half inch different, which you will definitely notice. And if it's the wrong way, the door could go up and it wouldn't close, which you could cut the door, but it would be better to just cut the jam instead of cut the door. Just to show you that this method also gets you the same result. We're level here. I'm going to set you down. And then we're gonna put this tape measure right there and you can see we're right at 7 16 One other thing I've learned while working on this house is that the end of this tape measure is never really the most accurate thing because it moves and stuff gets caked on there and throws off the measurement. As little as that looks, it's a big deal. And so um, a lot of people to solve this problem will just what's called burn a few inches. I usually do 10. And so I'll set it to start right at 10, and then I just add 10 to all my measurements. So right here, I'm gonna make a mark at 10 and 7 16 and that helps keep it more accurate. I got my piece cut off, so I'm gonna stand this up, and hopefully we did a good job. I'm inside the bathroom. It's probably a little more echoey than normal. What I've done is I've got the door set in here. This wall was perfectly level and it was perfectly straight. There was no bow in that board. So I just screwed it directly to it and then the bottom just needed a tiny little shim to get this perfectly straight. That's where that really long straight level comes in. So what I did is I just put in a couple of screws right near the hinges, well at the top and bottom and then near the middle hinge is what I generally do. And I put them in this flat spot and then I just fill them with putty. So that works. And then <clears throat> the left side, you just want this side perfectly straight up and down and level. And then this side you have to do based on the gap of the door. Now this 
particular door I've installed, I don't know, it's probably the sixth or seventh one. I've never found one that had a good gap at the top. And so what I do is I set the bottom with a decent gap where you can open the door and it doesn't rub. And then I match that gap in the middle. And then at the top, I just leave it how it is. And I generally have to take a plane and shave off maybe an eighth inch of the top of this door just to get it to where, like, it doesn't rub right now, but I can guarantee you after I paint this thing, it will rub. So I will just screw this one in and then I'll take about an eighth inch off of the top, like 18 inches of this door. All right, well, that is that. Ended up having to put four blocks on this side. I added another one here because it was kind of warping in a little bit, which you can check with a long straight level. Other than that, you just gotta, just to recap, make sure the floor is level. If it's not, figure out how much unlevel it is and cut that off of the high end. And then make sure this is in straight, screw it in, and then check the gap and make sure the gap is good. I'll just show you when you close it, the gap at the top is perfect. And that gap is set by primarily a level floor and secondary, but just as important, a level side with the hinge. This side does affect it. You know, if it's bowed way out, this is gonna come down at the top, but that is primarily not a concern if you're checking the gap and it's pretty close. So level this, make sure the floor is level. If this, just to think, if this was roughly a half inch higher, that would translate to where this was pushing up a half inch and there would be a half inch more gap right there, which there's not because we cut it off at the bottom. So the only other way to do it, which in this direction, there's no way to fix it because it's up over here. If it's the other way, you can cut off a little bit of the door to fit, but that's still not a best practice. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know with clicking the like button below and subscribing and we will see you next time.